Hey YouTube, Mr. Terry here with another History Teacher Reacts video. And today we're checking out the winner of this week's Patrons Pick Poll. And what they chose this week was Who Discovered America First? And this is by Atlas Pro, a uh, pretty popular channel that we have checked out before. So I'm glad we're going to check this out now. All right, this lines up pretty well because coming up here in the United States pretty quickly is Columbus Day. And Columbus Day is generally at the um, point of being observed as Christopher Columbus's voyage 1492 over to the Americas and we all know about the consequences of that. The big question though and although it's not really a question because everyone knows that Columbus didn't wasn't like the first kind of foreign person to come to the Americas because when we ask this question who discovered America first you have to you have to talk about what does discovered mean people have lived there for we have a direct evidence of many thousands of years of people that migrated across the Bering Strait and things like that. But if you're talking about kind of foreign groups that sailed and came across the Americas, people know about the Vikings. And there's deeper uh, theories out there that lack a little bit of the evidence. But people have hypothesized that maybe even the Phoenicians made their way across the Atlantic or maybe the Chinese came. A lot of different ideas out there. So I'm hoping what we get here is um, looking at those different areas and trying to weigh the evidence of them to, to check this out. If you you are interested in possibly voting in polls then consider joining patreon there's a link down below um, starting at a dollar a month you can vote in these polls and be part of the community over there if you get a larger pledge you can get some cool history merch that you can uh you know, be able to show off all over the place. Some other things too, we just launched a Twitch channel, which um, as of right now has been is being primarily used for a new feature that they have over on Twitch called Watch Parties. Now what you do is uh, if you have, I think you have your uh, Amazon account linked to Twitch, then you can join up on these Watch Parties. And what we did uh, for our first little run was watch some horrible history. So what you can do is you can come join us. We can watch uh, cool history videos. I see they have a big library there of uh, videos you can uh, actually do Watch Parties on. A lot of fun though. Also a gaming channel. If you want to do more gaming stuff, my gaming channel is down below, but anyway, links to other things down there as well. All right, let's go ahead and get started. The Colombian discovery of the Americas was one of the most important and revolutionary events in the history of humanity. Definitely. On a single day, October 12, 1492, the size of the world doubled, and Christopher Columbus, the leader of this well. expedition, went down in history both famous and infamous as the man who discovered America. I mean, I guess it <laughs> doubled in a way. The big thing that I'm, pro I'm sure they're going to get to, I want to make sure it gets covered, though, is what Columbus, has th what Columbus thought was that the world was much, much smaller than it actually was. But generally, nobody believed Columbus's actual accounts. He thought you could sail west like two weeks, and then you'd get to Asia, which is so bad um, when it comes to the actual mathematics. And nobody with any kind of like cartographic knowledge um thought Columbus was right. It's one of the big reasons why he got turned down so much because he was pretty demonstrably wrong about the size of the earth. The guy got really lucky that some landmass did actually come there uh, because if it was what people had thought before and it was just ocean until you get to Asia, that crew would never have survived. He would never even heard of Columbus before. This historic event should be recognized as the catalyst which saw our world changed forever, for better or for worse. Sure. That being said, it may not have been the true first time humans from the old world sailed across the ocean. And it's actually well known that Columbus wasn't the first European to reach the Americas at all. The sure. Vikings had already colonized Iceland and Greenland roughly a millennium ago by the year 950 CE. Mm -hmm. By 999 CE, Leif Erikson is known to have left Norway on his way to convert Greenland to Christianity and was blown off course and as a result found a new landmass, which he eventually came back to explore, making it as far down as New Brunswick in Canada. Yep. The settlements he built here were only temporary, and after trade with the natives turned up unsuccessful, Erickson returned to Greenland, sure. unaware of the scope of his discovery. Yeah, we have evidence of these settlements over there in what today is eastern Canada. Um, like they said, the, they didn't stick around much. I know they had some run-ins with the native people there that didn't go very well uh, for those reasons. But yeah, there's there's uh, settlements out there, and they keep finding it. So it looks like more and more. It looks like, you know, maybe... Again, we know they didn't stick around, but um, there's a lot more settlements than I think we even thought. 
history. Evidence for this voyage include the ruins of Viking settlements at the Laons Aux Meadows, as well as historical accounts of the journey. Cool little this, homes, huh? by most definitions, is the only definitively proven contact between the old and the new world prior to the voyage of Columbus. Right. But that doesn't mean there isn't some evidence that points towards earlier discovery events. Yeah, Sticking with earlier. European exploration, there are some that believe the Romans could have made it to the Americas thousands of years ago. Well, and that's what I was saying. Phoenicians who predate the Romans, too. They were the great traders of Mesopotamia. And evidence isn't very good. I got to look into more because it's been hypothesized. Maybe the Phoenicians even went out there. But I know that's a pretty fringe actual idea. As it stands currently, we have evidence that the Romans made it as far as the Canary Islands off the coast of Africa, which are still over 4,000 kilometers away from the nearest portion of mainland America. Yeah. Most potential evidence that Romans made this nearly 4,000 kilometer voyage comes from objects found throughout the New World which resemble the craftsmanship of the Romans more than any other Native American mm. style. Perhaps the most popular example is the Calix de Walk Ahead, or however you say it, I can't pretend I actually know. The artifact What's Roman in question about it? was discovered in a burial offering dated from between 1476 before Columbus and 1510 after Columbus. The terracotta head. But if it's Roman, then it was there. A thou at least a thousand years before that. So what's Roman about this thing? And shows what many consider to be particularly European features and doesn't match any known native art styles. Hmm. After analysis by several art historians yeah, dating, and archaeological though? experts, it was concluded that the figure was at least compatible with Roman sculpture styles from around the second century. What about the materials? That being said, many have called into question the artifact's authenticity or have even suggested it found its way here after Columbus arrived. Another popularly cited ex I mean, that's when you look at things, because, like, it would be pretty substantial if that was true, right? It's you got to think you got Occam's razor here. What's more likely to be that this thing got, yeah, taken in after the arrival of the Europeans or before? Um, when you have very little evidence, it's hard to back that up, um, especially if what you are going to say is very groundbreaking. The more groundbreaking it is, the more evidence that it usually requires uh, to to actually be true. But I don't know. I mean, I'm not an archaeologist, but you look at that thing. Does that just scream out? It has to be European. Example of out of place artifacts was found in Guanada Bay in modern day Brazil. Beneath the okay. waters here, remains of a shipwreck were uncovered in the late 1970s and continued to be found into the 2000s. Found among the shipwreck were the littering of many ceramic jars. After being analyzed by experts, these jars were identified as likely being amphorae, a container type used commonly by Greeks and Romans. Yeah, that's these that's very common. We see those all over the place in Europe, ancient Europe. The amphorae were so regular, in fact, that it was common practice for a trading ship to just dump them in the water near where they anchored because it was easier and faster to sail without them weighing down a yeah. vessel once they had been be. emptied. Yeah, once Fragments from an estimated 200 amphorae were found under the waters of this bay in Brazil, and some have used this to suggest that Romans were trading with the natives of this region. Other explanations have been given how- And it's hard though because the, the Romans were such notorious writers that i mean they wrote everything that you'd have more talk about this con uh, about this connection right it would be all over the place they'd be written about a lot however including a merchant ship being blown off course on its way to the canary islands or even the wreckage of a ship being deposited here by ocean currents and that makes well, sense because once you cross the equator uh, once you cross the equator from north to south um you can get blown if you got to look at a, a current map there. Um, but yeah, you could if you get blown, if you're in the northern part of the southern hemisphere, then it's going to push you kind of towards the Americas, push you west. If you're in the southern part of the southern hemisphere, it's going to try to slingshot you around um, South America. So if you're on the Canary, going to the Canaries, which is in the northern part of this, like more southern hemisphere area, then yeah, that that could potentially happen. So that idea of getting blown off is definitely possible. While there are plenty of other theories involving the ancient Europeans and especially the Romans, the next ones I want to talk about comes from the Irish. To understand this one, first we need to learn about an old Irish writing system called Ogham. This language began to develop around 500 CE and made use of many lines carved into a pillar to represent Post different Rome. letters. This is still considered one of the most unique writing systems ever devised by humans really? and is unlike any other writing system Whoa. ever studied. Look so, at that. It's just most of it's just lines, diagonal. How many they have, intersecting. But there are some like X shapes, a kind of a diamond shape that you got down here, kind of a spiral one. Fascinating. Can we read this? 
But when rock carvings like these, dated between 500 and 700 CE, were found in locations throughout Virginia and West Virginia in North America, it made many people question if there could have been some kind of Irish influence almost 5,000 kilometers away from Ireland. But for the most part, these claims are largely unsupported in the scientific community, although no other idea is popularly supported either. The interesting part of this, however, well actually this is all interesting, but the really interesting yeah. part, I guess, is that the Irish have a completely separate story that's been passed down through the generations, oh. which some believe is connected to this story. The tale involves Saint Brendan, an Irish monk said to have sailed across the Atlantic to discover paradise. Roughly around the same time, these markings were estimated to have been huh. made. The story is pretty long, but in short, St. Brendan leaves Ireland with 14 other monks to discover new lands called the Isle of the Blessed. What? Well, I mean, the Irish if people would have known about places like Iceland and Greenland. Is that, I wonder if that's what they were talking about? Oh, wait, duh. No, this is 500. Uh, this, this is before that, before, sorry, the Vikings had uh, come. I, I was thinking it was after. So... But I mean, that's to the Americas, though. I mean, they had come to other parts, again, like like Iceland before. Or it would have been prop. I don't know. I got to see when when were places like uh, Iceland and Greenland first sort of discovered. That I don't exactly know. Lot to know before I can make any kind of assessment of this. While on this journey, Brendan and the 14 monks and a couple of latecomers encounter some strange animals, some familiar ones too. They run into a few people, some described as having darker skin complexion, and they generally get into shenanigans until Brendan and the rest of his posse decide to head back home. On the way, it's said that they passed an island of blacksmiths who tossed molten slag out at their ship, and then they passed by crystal pillars. The island of blacksmiths is thought to be an interpretation of the volcanic island of Iceland, spewing okay. out molten rocks as they sailed by. I mean, that, would, that would make way more sense because you didn't have the metallurgy in the Americas. While the crystal pillars is thought to be an allusion to floating icebergs found throughout the North Atlantic. That to add sense. a cherry on top of all of this, in 1977, the British explorer Tim Severin completed a voyage from Ireland to America using only a traditional Irish Kirk boat, proving that at the very least this trip and therefore this story was possible. Of course, lines marked on a cave and an old Irish imrim aren't exactly hard evidence, and if none of these seem very possible still, then we're going to need to leave Europe. In fact, ideas about Africans reaching the Americas before Columbus are equally numerous and might even be more hmm. convincing. Like before I get to them though, I just want to look at the geography of this a bit. Hope you don't mind. Because when you take a real look at things, Africa and South America aren't actually terribly far apart right. from one another. The closest tips of each continent are less than 3,000 kilometers away, but off the coast of Africa are also the Cape Verde Islands that make a suitable restocking station. Sure. If launched from here, the trip to South America would be less than 2,600 kilometers. Not to mention, if you look at prevailing wind patterns over this part of the... I mean, it's still difficult, because if you're talking pre-Columbian times, the shipping, the ship technology to be able to go into real, true open waters like that just wasn't happening as much. I mean, because of the, the limitation of the navigation, I mean, shipping, like ships, didn't usually go in that really much that into, into open waters. I mean, um, especially in the ocean, because it, you know, is easy to get lost, um, extremely easy to get lost, but those ships... Uh, were a lot smaller and the strength of them and the, the sails and all that stuff weren't necessarily great for some of the open water and um, so just technologically speaking it would have been a, a, a definitely a big challenge oh well, this goes back to the wind patterns i was kind of telling you about um how once you cross kind of get in the um southern hemisphere yeah or actually just i mean right even in the, the, the southern part of the northern hemisphere yeah you're going to get pushed west uh, which can be helpful I mean, there, there could be a thing, too. Plenty of people may have ended up getting pushed out west if they were sailing and got off the coast of Africa and went there. Um, but it's much, much harder to sail back to more of the eastern hemispheres, so either to Africa or Europe. It's far it's far harder to sail back there from the Americas than to the Americas because of those patterns. And again, with the technologies not being as good at uh, uh, um, keeping a course and headwinds, you know, you could have seen a lot of people do that. But you just you don't hear their stories because they never made it back.
the world, we can see that winds around the equatorial Atlantic all blow from Africa to South America. These are what's called the Northeast Trade Winds. Trade winds because they're the same winds that were later used by Europeans during the times of the Columbian Exchange and colonization. Right. What this means is that sailing across this sizable gap could be fast and efficient if explorers had a good understanding of the winds in the area. So it's no surprise that talk of Africans reaching America before Europeans started as far back as 1862, when the first colossal head of the ancient Mesoamerican Olmecs. Olmec civilization Love was discovered things. in modern day Mexico. When those are one of my favorite pieces of archaeology, the Olmec, giant colossal Olmec heads. They're so cool. Analyzing the facial features displayed awesome. on these heads, it was noted how similar they looked not to the native people, but to Africans. And it was suggested that the heads were either created with Africans in mind or by Africans themselves who had traveled here. Now, hmm. these ideas have been That's heavily rejected there, by much of the scholarly community, but it has left the question of African activity in America open. And since then, other theories have emerged. It's commonly believed that Native American populations came across the now underwater land bridge of Beringia, which once connected Alaska to Siberia. And this has been more or less confirmed by genetic analysis, showing Native Americans' closest relatives to be those genetic groups from Eastern Asia. Yeah, what he's saying is the, the DNA in um, Native Americans has a lot. You can you can you can trace those back to um, this parts of uh, of Asia. So they have the DNA evidence to to be able to back that up that we know that did happen you know does that mean it's the only way it happened don't know but nothing to a, a huge degree though but what's strange is that many of the oldest human remains uncovered in the americas come not from the land around Beringia, but rather further south towards sure. the middle of the landmass the most well-known example of this well, yeah, are those the were remains of a people. teenage girl nicknamed Naya. Yeah, I mean, the, the people that would have lived up north there, those they, they would have been nomadic. They um, wouldn't have had cities. The, 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 the agri there's no agriculture possible up there um, to have those kind of uh, sedentary cities. So they happen in the much more favorable uh, latitudes. That's why when you look at ancient cities, the history of ancient cities in Eurasia or Africa, they're all uh, within a similar line of latitude between about 20 degrees north to 20 degrees south. Um, so yeah, you don't find that big settlements beyond that because of the climate. It's not possible to have those kind of things. So um, yeah, you're, you're, you shouldn't expect to find as much stuff towards the Bering Strait than you would in lower latitudes found in the Yucatan Peninsula in modern-day Mexico, I nowhere near where humans supposedly first stepped foot on the continent. The bones left by this unfortunate girl and those of other early inhabitants of America were found to have completely different bone structures from the Native Americans later found by Columbus. Instead, their faces were smaller and shorter, while their entire skulls were longer and narrower than the typical Native American. Yeah. Reconstructions of the girl's face revealed these differences much clearer, for me anyway and show just how these features are much more in line with those of a person of African descent, as well as possibly native Australian or Pacific Islander. Yeah, I mean, from what I understand about the, the, the immigration, it didn't all come from one group of people either. There was a lot of, actually a bunch of different groups of people made that migration over time. This isn't the only fossil like this discovered in America either, and the finding of similar ones, all older than the ones found in Beringia, has called into question whether those Asian explorers who crossed Beringia really were the first people to walk on American soil, or if its first inhabitants were of African or even possibly Pacific descent. The last thing I want to talk about in relation to Africans making... Man, you'd have to go way back, because I mean, they're going tens of thousands of years with some of these, um, these, these people way to the Americas actually has to do with Columbus himself, and more specifically his third voyage to the Americas. It was recorded by the historian Bartolome de las Casas that Columbus's sole purpose on this voyage was to test the claims that had made it all the way to King John II of Portugal. These claims described how canoes had been found which set out from the coast of Guinea, which is West Africa, and sailed to the west with merchandise. Or basically, people from West Africa were sailing out west into the Atlantic with valuable things for trade, and King John of Portugal was curious about where these goods were going. Following these directions, Columbus sailed for the west of Africa and discovered the continent of South America. Hmm. Whether or not these myths of African merchants were true, the land they were supposedly traveling to was real, which, if you ask me, gives at least some credence to these stories. I just haven't heard of, technologically, any group in Africa having the shipping that would have been possible um, for that to happen earlier on. Uh, what groups might, would, would those has, has specifically abandoned? I mean, you're going to get 
traders later on, like the Mali Empire or something, but those were most land-based trades, at least from what uh, we know about them. But yeah, I'd like to know what, because um, we're talking about these ships and stuff like that, if we, if we have any like evidence of those, uh, physical evidence. That'd be, that'd be amazing. Despite this, there's still been no tangible evidence to back up these claims other than word of mouth from some long dead and lost original sources. Sure. Moving away from Africa and the Atlantic Ocean as a whole, we come to East Asia and the sure. Polynesian this is where Pacific. I've heard of. Now, if we again look at the prevailing More wind that. patterns that may have helped Africans reach the east coast of the Americas, the opposite. the opposite is true in the Pacific, where winds blowing east to west would have impeded explorers' ability to travel east near the equator. Right. But the opposite is true at higher yeah, latitudes, where north. prevailing winds could have helped push explorers towards the Americas. These are collectively known as the westerlies, which blow from the west to the east. These wind patterns result in ocean currents in the Pacific that look pretty similar, forming an ocean gyre which moves water from around Japan yeah. all the way to the American West Coast. These were pretty much accidentally discovered um, because it's like even if the wind is still, you are moving in a direction because the ocean is actually moving, right? Even if the wind is you know, in your uh, temperate location doing something, the ocean itself is moving and, and it, to you it doesn't feel like it at all doesn't feel like it at all and all of a sudden you're maybe a lot further than you thought but once they understood those this this really helped um trade and just voyages overall all across the planet before we get talking about ancient east asians traveling to the americas i want to give a brief summary of the story of the three kichis you see while serving hmm. as crew members on a rice transport ship three japanese men iwakichi the ship's navigator kyukichi an assistant cook and odokichi another assistant cook actually and 11 other men encountered a storm in the western pacific off the coast of japan during the storm the mast and rudder broke off from the ship leaving it and its crew stranded in the middle of the pacific but because it was a rice transport ship, the men actually had enough food to survive, and over 14 months, the Pacific Ocean Current, now called the Kuroshio Current, took the boat and the surviving crew across the ocean and deposited them in Washington state. By the time they arrived on land, only the three Kichis remained, everyone else having died from nutrient deficiencies. There's a lot more to this story too, but for our purposes, this is the first recorded example of a boat being swept from Japan to North America entirely without a source of propulsion or steering. Events like this have been recorded several times afterwards as well, but and many scholars back. find it hard to story, believe right? that these events only started to occur after the Columbian discovery. I guess I should stress again that we don't actually have any evidence of this happening prior to colonization oh. of the continent, and all the statements about this are entirely circumstantial. If we take another look at the prevailing winds and currents in the Pacific though, we can see the Kuroshio Current is mirrored in the Southern Hemisphere by the South Pacific Current, which opens up the possibility of an American discovery by the Polynesians as well. Now it's already well known that the Polynesians were master seafarers and navigators, right. which might explain- I mean, it's amazing when you look at the Polynesian uh, ancestors of them getting to like most habitable islands like throughout the Pacific. It's pretty, pretty insane um, how successful they were. And, you know, and I'm sure for every successful voyage, there was possibly multiple disastrous ones. But the fact that most of the islands that, again, can be actually be inhabited, become inhabited, it takes a long time. But the mere fact they could do that is an incredible sign of um, uh, ingenuity when it comes to the seafaring. There's possibly the most evidence in favor of contact between the Polynesians and Native Americans. There are numerous examples of this, but my favorite includes the sweet potato, which is known to yeah. have originated in Central and South America. But when exploring the Pacific, early Europeans right also here. found them growing throughout Polynesia. Right. Now, most of the islands the Polynesians inhabited were volcanic in origin, meaning they never shared any sort of geological history with America. And therefore, the sweet potato must have been brought here by some other means. Some have used this to say that the Polynesians themselves arrived in South America and brought vine clippings back with them to farm, while others have proposed that the vegetable managed to disperse itself by riding ocean currents over many thousands of years. This theory of a Polynesian introduction, however, would help explain too why the Proto-Polynesian word for sweet potato, kumala, is noted to be very similar to those of South American Quechua and Amaro words for the same crop, komar and komara. I should remind you, there are also numerous other similar examples to this one, which include everything from Peruvian mummies being found with sap from a New Guinean tree, all the way to canoes in California resembling both in form and name those built by the Polynesians. 
Like I said at the beginning though, none of these hypotheses have been proven with large amounts of undisputed evidence. Obviously, someone made it to America before Columbus, as evidenced by all the millions of people in ancient civilizations found here upon first contact. Clearly, these people were the true discoverers of America, as they were the first to establish permanent settlements on the continent, thousands of years before Columbus or Leif Erikson or anyone else. Yeah. Discovered is a relative term in this video, as sure. I hope you realized instead of writing redundant comments down below. Yeah. I'm not saying any of these have been legitimized to the point that we need to change our history textbooks. All I'm trying to say is that there are things in this world that should make us question our understanding of American discovery and exploration, and world history as a whole. Regardless of what the answer is, the question who discovered America is still a question I believe is worth asking and can only sure. help to improve our understanding of history that has long since passed. I hope you agree with me on this one and judging by the fact that you watched this entire video, I'd say you would. Besides that, let me know of any other questionable examples of people making it to the Americas before Columbus. I find this topic very interesting. If you want to keep seeing videos like this, I'd suggest checking out my Patreon. That's how all these people got their name on here, and that's how I keep this channel running. Patrons, I should be back next MVPs. week with another video, so subscribe if you want to see that. Thanks. <laughs> cool. All right, so yeah, they, they uh, he was asking about other, you know, ideas for um, other types of connections. And again, a couple that I had heard before that wasn't really discussed was potentially the Phoenicians as well as the Chinese. Um, you know exactly when, I mean, with the Chinese, it would have been, I guess, late, late 1300s, early 1400s in the kind of era of the early Ming Empire, specifically potentially under the direction of Zheng He, which I, it's a little bit harder for him because he sailed with an entourage of like 20 to 30,000 people. If you ever looked into Zheng He, he's probably the, the greatest navigator that you may have never heard of and was doing things at a scale that the Europeans never got to. And he was doing it a hundred years before they were in the, again, the early 1400s. But I'd heard about that potentially being possible. I know there's a book out there. I think it was called like 14 Oh something the year China discovered America. I know there's a, there's a book about there that's kind of not been really accepted by the community, but there's a hypothesis out there that the Chinese had done that in the early 1400s. So yeah, I mean, a lot of it comes down to very suspect evidence and some of these stories, like they were saying, uh, seeming more, you know, like legends, almost mythology in a way, but interesting how that had happened. Um, now, one thing we know though, is when it comes to voyages that actually had an impact I mean, that on its own is why the Columbus voyage should continue to get talked about. Again, not, not for the, the good or bad part of it, but the con how, how consequential it was. Because with, with um, Columbus, there's an actual okay, meeting up of this and then further exploration um, that's going to happen in a wave of immigration, conquistadors, all this stuff that happens. It's definitely the most consequential you know what I mean? So, uh, but yeah, I think it's still a discussion that's interesting to look at. And hopefully, again, we can find more archaeology, more reliable sources, because it is a fascinating thing to, to, to see these type of connections and when they actually happen there. All right, then. Well, thanks for watching here today and um, being a part of uh, hopefully educating yourself more and more and getting these new ideas about history. I think, again, I think these these type of questions where they're still kind of up in the air are some of the most important ones that we can learn about and um because that's where the breakthroughs come through all right again uh thank you to all of our patrons you guys are awesome you guys selected this video i'm glad you did it i thought it again timed well with columbus day approaching here in the united states and this topic just again being one of the uh interesting ones to keep looking at again other links down below discord if you want to join our discord community that'd be awesome we got uh, just about eight thousand people that are members over there and love to talk about things got links to some cool stuff um down below like teespring as well and and with that, uh, we'll go ahead and call it here, and we'll see you next time. Bye.